This program is brought to you by the Genesis Communications Network, a world leader in talk radio since 1998. Visit GCNlive.com today. and streaming live all across America. This is Home Talk USA with Michael King, where we will discuss topics pertaining to your home with industry-leading experts. Michael King is a licensed general contractor with more than 30 years of experience in home improvements and the author of Contracting with the King. Join us this hour for our segment, Invent America, with your co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. Discover what's next in the home improvement industry and explore new products and innovations. Or if you have that next great big idea, learn what it takes to bring your invention to the world as Michael King and Rita Crompton talk to America's inventors and innovators. Remember, the America of tomorrow is being invented today. We invite you to visit us at HomeTalkUSA.com, one of the best resources for home improvement information around today. Your best life begins with your best home, and there's no place like Home Talk. That's HomeTalkUSA.com. And now, we proudly present Invent America from the number one home improvement radio program in the country, Home Talk USA, with your host, the Cajun contractor, Michael King, and his co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. Yay! Welcome, America! That's right. Uh, welcome, all of you, to the Invent America Show, which is part of the Home Talk USA radio network. Um, every week, we do three hours of live radio interviews and broadcasts, and that second hour from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock Central Time, we do the uh, to try to help all the inventors out there. And uh, uh, we only started with Rita Crompton, my co-host. Rita, welcome again for another Thank segment you. of the show. I, Rita, I'm just trying to explain to my audience what's the difference in the show and why we we do this show each week with you. And uh, you became a regular guest of Home Talk. You probably was on the show maybe twice a year or something like that. And I would meet you at the, uh, uh, the trade shows and... I would be talking to the young inventors out there and getting them on, doing some radio interviews. And we started to do these interviews, and it got very popular, and more people wanted to be on the show. And I said, hey, you know, we don't want to confuse anybody, so why don't we just take a segment of Home Talk and we focus on the inventors only and explain a little bit about what you do and a little bit about your role and um, and how valuable – um, your guys are to young inventors. Oh, thank you so much. And, you know, it's, it is interesting. We've had a wonderful story together as we've developed our relationship over the 15, 20 years. And, and a lot of it is because, you know, when you're talking about do-it-yourself home improvement stuff, which is exactly what you do, a lot of these people come up with a better widget. They come up with a better way of doing something. And that's where it gets into then inventing America. And, you know, we've got Invent America now because America invents. We have always been inventors and innovators. And so when we're talking about then all these little gadgets and somebody says, well, I'm not really an inventor. I'm not, an, you know, I'm, I'm not a, 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 you know, an Albert Einstein or I'm not, you know, a Tesla and all of these, you know, guys that we think historically, you know, I hear Ben Franklin thrown out there all the time with his kite. And it's like, okay, well, don't run out there with a kite and, you know, and a key on the end of it. Yeah. But it's the little things. It's the little things that, you know, you can look down a row at a Home Depot and see, you know, 15 different flashlights, and a lot of them will have some new aspect of it that's patent pending or, you know, that's still under a patent protection. And so we look at intellectual property and how do we help the inventors get out there, but it's a lot of times just their cool new way of doing some things. So we want to encourage everybody out there, and in our idea of a young inventor is someone who's just getting started as opposed to, you know, someone who's 15 instead of 65, but there are inventors of every single age from 10, you know, up to, you know, 95, and we get to help all of them get their products to market. And it's not just a product, it's the process too also, right? Yes. 
You know, there's one of the gentlemen we're talking to, to today, his, his patent is on the process of what he's making, not on the actual product, which is interesting. We're talking about, you know, what do you do if you can't get a patent? How do you protect your idea? And then we're going to have a registered patent attorney on as our third guest that, you know, kind of validates now what these guys have done. But these products have been in the marketplace for years. We still, you know, in our home and my family, I always laugh because I tell my family, you know, I would give them new inventor products every year for Christmas. And both Grisco and Pine Wright are gifts that they still get every year um, in their Christmas stockings or ship to them or whatever, because they're just, you know, we can't imagine a household without them. Um, but they both had to do it differently. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, talk about the other guests we're going to have today before we take a short break. We're going to, we're going to talk to John Bilby, who invented Grisco, and we're going to, going to talk to um, Andre Robb, who did Pine Wright. And that's an interesting one because it was made out of all that beetle kill pine out there in the Rocky Mountains. And, wow. you know, it's like, all right, well, here's a bunch of junk that we're going to burn. And, and Andre uh, goes, no, no, let's see if we can't make a better hot dog. And he did. Now, he's the one that has the patent on the machine that makes it, not on the product. And I just got done ordering both of these for my Christmas gifts. We also, have a, uh, we also have a patent attorney, right? Exactly. And Jonathan David is a patent attorney um, out of the Chicago area. Uh, he's done several patents for inventors that have come to me and said, Rita, can you help me? Um, and he's, he's, he's very good at working with the inventors and helping them see a, a bigger picture of what they can do. So, you know, I've been working with him now for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, my, my inventors enjoy working with him because he'll keep them on track. Um, you know, you don't need to talk about the weather when you're on the phone with the attorney. It's billable time. Um, so he was very good at keeping them on track and focused and then getting their patents issued, which uh, also, is a big deal. I also want my audience to know that uh, next week uh, um, we didn't have a uh, show planned. And then I was looking at the schedule, and, of course, I woke up and said, we can do a show. So we're also going to have a show next week, right? We are have a show next week and right. it's going to be dedicated to how the service providers because every inventor needs to use a you know pool of service providers how do we pick the good ones and how do those service providers help our inventors then um and so that's what we're going to be talking about and then i think that's going to be our last show for the year right and then we're going to come back uh the second monday um of the new year right absolutely yeah and then that way we're going to do a best of, and you're going to pick some shows. I'm going to pick some shows, and uh, some of the best of uh, what we talked about for the what the last three months, and uh, and uh, do a recap. You know, so that's pretty much what we got lined up right now, right? It's, I can't believe we've been doing this for three months, and yeah. um, you know we have gotten a really good rhythm going for our inventors and helping yeah. you know everybody out there say, oh, I've got an idea. So we're going to talk about that as our New Year's resolution that first Monday back. Yeah. You know, get every you've been sitting on an idea. Do your New Year's, New Year's resolution. Get it out there. And then I think at the end of January, we have the trade show, the uh, International Builders Show, uh, the Hardware Show, the Kitchen and Bath Show, um, all three shows combined together in Las Vegas, right? I think it's at That's the end of January? It first starts quarter. January January 31st, yeah. February 1st and 2nd. And if you are out there and you are patent pending and you've got proof of concept prototypes and are thinking about going, now is the time to call me and say, Rita, I need one of those spots because I've still got about a half a dozen spots left. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Rita, we've got um, a great uh, lineup this hour. And uh, um, we're going to take a short break. But tell our audience who's going to be our first guest when we come back off a break. John Bilby is our first guest. He is the inventor of Grisco. Grisco, what they do? What, what they... Grisco is a cleaning product that is made out of the spices in your kitchen. We could actually spritz it on a salad if we want to. Wow, now that is very, very innovative. <laughs> It is. It is really awesome. I've, I've sprayed it on my hand and licked it off before and then cleaned red wine out of a white carpet. So it works very, very well. It's amazing the topics we talk here each week and every week. Man, it you. is. Especially me also being a Cajun chef, you know, I'm going to be really paying attention yeah. to this interview, you know. You should try this one, yeah. Yeah. I I'll send you some my, for Christmas. I can put it in my food and clean the counter at the same. Look at the money I'm saving. Oh, wow. I know. All right. <laughs> All right. Rita Crompton, the ventilator. Ventilating. This is the Cajun Contractor, Michael King. 
Don't forget, we are streaming live on the World Wide Web at HomeTalkUSA.com. That's HomeTalkUSA.com. All right, we're going to take a short break. We're going to be right back. USA with Michael King. Do you have questions about your next home improvement project or home repairs? Now you can chat with verified home repair and home improvement experts in just minutes. Get the help you need by visiting HomeTalkUSA.com, one of the best resources for home improvement information around today. Your best life begins with your best home, and there's no place like Home Talk. That's HomeTalkUSA.com. And now, back to Invent America from the number one home improvement radio program in the country, Home Talk USA, with your host, the Cajun contractor, Michael King, and his co-host, the inventor lady, Rita Crompton. All right, we do invite all of you to check out our podcast. That's right. Uh, The Invent America show is available on the Home Talk USA radio network website at hometalkusa.com. 24-7-365. 24-7-365. So if you miss our live interviews on Saturday at 4 o'clock Central Time on the Genesis Communication Radio Network at GCNlive.com, you can go to HomeTalkUSA.com and read it. They actually can go to your website too, right? Yes, they can because yeah. we list these products on the website. That's right. So, uh, but Rita, um, we, hey, we got John on the line, right, Rita? <laughs> we do. Mr. John Bilby is the founder of Clean Enterprises, and he wanted to invent a product that would work and be safe and not have any harsh chemicals in it. So he invented Grisco, um, which is, uh, and, and also then a version called Aunt Sarah's Best. We're going to let him tell you a little bit more about that. The cool thing about this is, Grease Go and Aunt Sarah's Best are made out of the spices you find in everybody's kitchen. So you could actually spritz this, spritz this on a salad and then go and clean the countertops with it. Um, you know, I've, I've sprayed it on my hand, licked it off, and then cleaned red wine out of the carpet, and it works. Um, which got everybody at the, the party and the lady who spilled the red wine off the hook because they were all thinking, oh, that's so cool. Um, so, John, tell us a little bit about Grisco and Aunt Sarah's Best and, and how you managed to put together this right combination of ingredients, and then we'll talk about the special intellectual property. Okay. Uh, I started uh, wanting in a cleaner that was safe, and uh, I thought that uh, the product that we use for all these cleaners today are harsh and toxic and everything else. So I thought, you know, food products have all kinds of things in them. So I started research and uh, taking food products from ice cream, toothpaste, canned goods, uh, bakery products, just any product that was on the grocery shelf and started experimenting with products that would make a good safe cleaner and lo and behold grease go was born from there so uh it is a food safe product uh biodegradable non-toxic uh non-flammable <laughs> uh i even uh spray my hand and lick it yeah, and, and I have two multiple times, um, just to, just to prove a point, and um, then cleaned up a big mess. So the cool thing about it is, you know, and what we're talking about today is, the, you know, it's not a traditional patent type of application. What John used was a trade secret, and so you want to explain a little bit about that? You've got a great trademark and a trade secret. Uh, yes, uh, I talked to an attorney about this, and he's. He, he recommended that I write down all my formulations, put them in a, a separate envelope, each one, and seal it uh, real well. So I take my formulation, I write it down, I stick it in an envelope, and on the back where the lip is sealed down, I take a pen and make a squiggly mark all along the edge and then take packing tape and put over that. So it, it's really hard to get into, and could, it's almost tamper-proof. And then I send it to myself, 
And when I receive it back, I put it in a, uh, a safe. Uh, even if someone gets to it, uh, you know, they got to break the seal. So as long as the seal has not been broken, it goes to court. You just take your letter, hand it to the judge, and he sees it sealed up. It's dated. It's postmarked. And so nobody else knows the secret formulation. So by so, it, doing this... It's kind yeah. of in the same category as Coca-Cola. I mean, they always laugh that that was a, you know, a secret formula. Mm-hmm. And so right. there, there's actually a lot of things out there that have gone based on trade secrets. So, you know, you might have one entity make one part of it, another entity make another part of it, and another entity is what put, puts them all together and packages them. And then there's, you know, when you are doing it all yourself, you, you know, you've got to keep track of that formula and keep it a secret. Exactly. Yes. So that's what I do. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of trade secrets out there. Krispy, Krispy Kreme Donuts is a trade secret. Twinkies, WD-40, Listerine, Coca-Cola. Uh, yep. So, you know, there's a lot of trade secrets. Hey, we can't forget we, hey, we can't forget about the Colonel, man. Can't forget about the yeah. Colonel. That's hey. right. The, yeah, KSC, he's right at the top. Of, yeah. They've been you trying know. to steal it. And I think somebody told me the other day there's only three people that actually know today the re- the, the whole recipe. There's still like three people. They had they interviewed somebody and it's like right. only three people that's that know the whole the whole recipe. But oh, they got that thing right. and uh lock and guard, man. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, that's the way mine is. I'm the only one that knows the formulas. Uh I and like I said, I, I keep them in uh, you know, in the safe and uh you know, the attorney says there's no judge that would turn that away. So, yeah, that's, you're that's you're exactly right. And when you've got to keep a trade secret, anything that is a recipe has got to be kept as a trade secret. Is kind of the, the rule of thumb in intellectual property world. Right, right, and and there would probably go to other applications as well. The the one that we see that runs up against that is um, the the formulas for a, a, a computer application. You know the apps and uh, right. the algorithms; those are considered like recipes, and so they right. are kept as trade secrets. Right. Sure. So yes. Right. And that's uh, you know I do all I have about twenty or so envelopes down there. It's all sealed and. <laughs> So, John, we're, yeah. we're, out of, we're out of time, my buddy. I definitely want to thank you, and Rita wants to thank you for being our guest. Give us that website. How can we learn more about Greaseco? Uh, www.greaseco.com. And there's no E in Grease. It's G-R-E-A-S-G-O.com. Great. Well, John, right. I definitely yeah. want to thank you for being our guest, man. And drop me and Rita a line and keep us up for how you're doing, Okay. I sure will. Thank you so much. Glad you got to talk it. with you. All okay. right. That was John Bilby. John Bilby with Greaseco. Check him out. Greaseco.com. That's G-R-E-A-S-G-O.com. All right, Rita, we're going to take a short break. Got to pay some bills here, right? Yes, sir. We certainly do. When we come back, who's going to be our guest? Jonathan David, a registered patent attorney, and he's going to talk about some of those other options. All right, John David, thank you. It's going to be here shortly. It's all about the process, right, Rita? All right, we can take a short break. Right here.